Hi folks, a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of being a guest on the podcast, The Amp Hour. It is hosted by a fellow named Chris Gamble, who I met actually at M Hub uh, when I was doing our tour and video there a few weeks back, and Dave Jones from the EEV blog, which I think is pretty cool because I started my YouTube channel kind of when Dave did, and I followed some of his videos when it came to electronics and Arduino stuff. The super awesome podcast card here to the page where you can listen to it, but it was fun to talk about CAD with folks that don't use CAD every day, and you kind of get that outside perspective of what it's like if you want to make your part. And Dave Jones' coworker over at EEV blog is trying to evaluate various CAD packages, and he thought that this shape here was not something that we could make in Fusion 360. And I think we actually can. Let's show how. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. First off, we're gonna show the basic shape construction as a loft extrusion without this 3D complex nature. Then we'll come back and do the 3D version. I'm going to right click, new component, we'll call this the base lofted shape. If you're brand new to Fusion 360 and you're trying to learn, head over to nyccnc.com, click on Fusion 360, and either getting started or any of these drop down menus, we've got lots of video tutorials on everything from how to download it and set it up to making your first part. C for circle. I'm going to sketch a circle on this plane. We'll call it a four inch circle. E for extrude. Click once and the arrow is pointing up, so I'll say negative one to extrude that shape one inch down. Now we've got this square and we've got a circle over here. S is a keyboard shortcut to bring up this model toolbox quick search. I'm going to type in center, center rectangle. And I'm going to sketch a center rectangle right here. And then I'm going to sketch a circle over here. D brings up the dimension shortcut. I'm going to dimension this to be 0.25. And I'll say this is also equal to the 0.25. That's D4. And D4. That links all these back to 0.25. So if I say type 0.375, everything changes. Now I want these to be in line with our center axis. So I'll click and drag a box out here to deselect everything. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to click horizontal vertical. Click once on the center of our circle and once here. And I'll do the same thing. Once on the center of the rectangle and once on the center. That now locks these in horizontally. I can still move them left to right though. D for dimension, the center to the dot here, we'll say is one inch and one inch. Stop sketch. Now what I need to do is create that loft. Again, we're just gonna do a simple loft and then we'll go 3D. S for keyboard shortcut, arc. I'm gonna do a three point arc. What plane do I want to do it on? This plane right here. And I'm gonna loft from here to here and I'll dimension it so it's a constant one inch radius. Awesome. S for keyboard shortcut, loft. What do I wanna do? I wanna loft this square over to this circle. So what it's trying to do right now, it's probably gonna give us an error, is it's trying to morph those two between each other, but it can't do it because they're on the same plane. So I'm gonna instead click on this center line guide rail and say, hey, do that along this guide rail. Now click OK and take a look. Pretty cool CAD functionality. That easily we're able to take a square shape and along this path transition it or loft it or morph it into that circle right there. But that doesn't look anything like this. It does give us really good framework and groundwork though to make this. The key to this is some 3D sketching. Go to your name, preferences, design, and make sure you have allow 3D sketching of lines and splines checked. I'm going to hide this guy with the light bulb and I'll do a new component 3D loft. C for circle. Screw that down. R for rectangle. I'm going to sketch a rectangle. 
right here. We'll say coincident, the line with that. I'm going to put a point on it. Horizontal, vertical. That's making this symmetric. There's a lot of ways we could do this. And we'll dimension everything to one inch. So I now have a one inch square perpendicular to this face. Click stop sketch. Now I'm going to do construct plane at angle. So what's my line? This line. And we'll say 60 degrees. Click OK. And I'll do that again. Construct plane at angle. This line I'll say negative 60 degrees. So I've got those two planes. Now I'm going to sketch a rectangle on them. R for rectangle. I'll click this plane. Now the one little trick here is I want to snap it to that corner, but that corner doesn't exist right now. I can't snap it. So hit P on your keyboard shortcut. I'm going to click project. Now I can go back to R for rectangle and I'll do that one by one. So we can see we got that one by one sketched at a 60 degree angle. Stop sketch and do the same thing over here. R for rectangle on that plane. P for project. I'm going to project that point in. R and one by one. Believe it or not, we're mo almost done. Stop sketch. Now comes the 3D part. You don't actually pick a 3D sketch, but rather, again, make sure into your preferences you've got that option checked. Sketch, spline. I'll start on this base plane. Click once, twice, here. You can just see I'm moving around. Move over to this edge, to here, to here, to here, to here. And when we're done, we can click the little green plus and take a look. We have made that 3D sketch, which believe it or not, it looks like a very biological or morphed style shape, but it's actually driven by parametric 2D sketch geometry, which is pretty cool. Now we're done. I'm going to turn off some of those existing sketches so we don't have all that noise, but I am going to create the same shapes at the base. Center rectangle. And... Stop sketch and S loft. I'm going to loft that shape to that shape along my center guide rail. I believe there's one thing that we failed to do. And if you look at Dave's example, he starts both of these splines out. And I believe this is correct. I'm not a spline expert. Where the start and end are what are called normal to or perpendicular. In other words, you can see how this starts at basically a 90 degree angle and it ends at a 90 degree angle. Whereas mine is starting right into a spline shape. If we go back and open that sketch up, you can see that's nothing like a 90 degree. I don't know how to fix that. And that may actually be a limitation, at least right now, to Fusion 360. I love Fusion 360. It does everything we need to run our machine shop and do our product design. It's not necessarily as powerful as solid packages like SolidWorks. It's also uh, not nearly the same price. And for us, we don't need to do crazy sh shapes like this. Or if we need to machine them, we're able to easily import uh, solid models from other CAD packages. I mentioned all this because I believe Dave's video, in fact, card here to his channel video, where they were doing a shootout between SolidWorks Rhino and Onshape on how to make this sort of a shape. They seem to do so with an emphasis on time, which I don't really agree with. There's a lot of factors that come into evaluating a CAD package, and one of the reasons I like Fusion is relatively low cost, very capable relative to what most of us need to get done. But for sure, if you're doing really advanced CAD stuff, you may need to use a package like SolidWorks or even Inventor. But we used to be a SolidWorks customer, and I got tired of paying the uh, initial cost and the maintenance, ongoing maintenance fees, uh, when I used about 3% of its capabilities. And I suspect we'll see some improvements to uh, 3D sketching here in Fusion. But nevertheless, pretty cool shape, right? It, uh, when I first looked at this, I thought, I'm really struggling to figure out how to do this. And once you see it broken down, not all that hard, folks. So hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.